Hi, it's Candatex here with a series of videos about installing Linux and Scratch version 12.0. So the latest version of Linux and Scratch has been released today. Um, and in fact, it's not, uh, the web page hasn't been updated yet, but um, I've managed to get hold of the book so we can get on building it. Um, and hopefully by the time you see this video, the web page will be up to date. So to get to the website, it's just www.linuxfromscratch.org forward slash LFS. Um, alternatively, if you land on the home page without the forward slash LFS, um, you can, I'll show you actually, click on home. You just click on this first link here to get to the actual LFS project home page. So what I'm hoping to do is to um, show you how to install Linux from scratch to replace Windows 10 on a machine. Um, I'll be building the System V version, not the System D, um, mainly because it's, well, I think it's the default build still, um, as far as I can tell. Um, but more importantly, perhaps it's slightly more easy. There's fewer packages to install. Uh, the machine I've got hasn't got UEFI, so I won't be showing how to install that. But again, that's more involved. It, it involves going to the BLFS book to install a few extra packages. So um, the process I'm, I'm showing you is basically the simplest process to get a Linux from scratch system. What it does mean, however, is that you'll need a, an older machine or if you've got a modern machine, to build LFS on, that you'll need to go into the BIOS and set the CSM mode or legacy mode, um, basically to disable UEFI or to en enable the BIOS to um, be able to identify non-UEFI operating systems. Otherwise, uh, if you don't do that, then the new Linux from scratch you've built won't boot at all. So, as I say, this is a, an older machine. It's approximately 12 years old, I think. Uh, so, there's no UEFI. Um, it's just a fairly basic, well, it's a, it's a basic i5. It's the first um, generation of i5, the Core 2 processors. Uh, but it has got four threads available. So, it's a little bit slow, but it does build in a reasonable time. Um, it means I think the build time is going to be approximately, I think, 12 hours in total of actual build time. But obviously a, a more modern machine will be faster. And if you have extra cores, then that can improve the build time somewhat. One thing to point out is that it's not necessarily the case that if you go from four cores to eight cores, it will halve the time. Um, a lot of the time in most of the packages, apart from a few, uh, there are only a few threads running anyway. Um, they don't use all cores all the time. So the more cores you throw at it, it's kind of a law of diminishing returns. You, you don't get uh, the performance you get back. Um, what What is important more than anything, perhaps, uh, is the single core speed, um, as I say, because a lot of the time there's just a single process running. Occasionally there's two or three, maybe four. Um, so it's a bit of a juggling act predicting uh, how long it will take. On the latest machines, you're probably looking at a, of an actual compile time of between an hour and two hours or so. Uh, just to give you an indication. So in theory, it could be completed in, in half a day. Um, but generally, especially if you're new to Linux from scratch, you'll probably want to spend time reading the book. So normally, um, to get to the Linux from scratch book, you can either download it or read it online is probably the easiest. And there's, um, as you can see, they haven't updated it yet. It's still got the uh, first release candidate. So I'd expect sometime today that to be updated to be the stable version. So what I've done, I've got it on a local 
machine. Um, so let's see if I can access that. Uh, 31 is it? Perhaps it's 30. Okay, yep, so there it is. So this is the manual. Um, basically, if you're curious about what LFS is, perhaps I should explain that it's just a Linux distribution that's built, as it says, completely from scratch. So what, what happens is we fetch all the source programs from all the different locations on the web we extract them and then we run a set of commands to compile that source into binary executables um, that gets installed into a temporary system initially. And then we use the temporary system to build the final system. And the reason why we effectively build some packages twice, and in fact, some packages are built three times in total, is to disconnect the host system, which is the system that carries the operating system that we'll be using to build the final system. Um, it's the, the, the multiple times I've built, it, uh, Linux from scratch is built, is to divorce that original host system from the final system we build because there's a lot of interconnections between programs as you compile them. So you might compile a package and it will take or extract information from the current system you're, you're building. So the temporary build system um, starts to cut ties with that, and then when we build the final system, further ties are cut. So in theory, the final system shouldn't have any references to the um, original system that you use to build Linux from scratch from. So um, what we need to do is we need to get the build into, um, or the, the environment into a Linux system. We can't build Linux from scratch from Windows. Um, we're going to lose Windows anyway. We're going to overwrite it. So what we need to do is we need a host Linux system. And in theory, you can use any Linux distribution, um, any recent ones certainly, because there is a requirement on the packages that are used to build Linux from scratch. So if, for example, you used a Linux distribution from 10 years ago, you'll probably find that a lot of the packages are out of date and either the Linux from scratch wouldn't build or there'd be problems building and so on or you'd get unexpected things happening. So a recent um, distribution, probably within the last three or four years, would be sufficient. Um, um, and also there's a minimum set of packages that are required to build the new Linux from scratch system as well. And there's a script that um, the book has got, which we can run to check those versions to make sure they are new enough. Uh, another thing about the distributions is not all distributions are by default configured to uh, compile programs or what's known as a, they're not configured to be a, a development environment. So, that means that you have to install extra packages to get the system into that um, environment where you can build and compile programs. Now, there are a couple by default that do have all the packages. Um, the first I always recommend initially is Gen2 because Gen2 is a source driven distribution. It's just that it's automated. Um, so that's my first recommendation because of the fact that it is built for building from source. Um, my second recommendation is Endeavor OS, which uh, has its own features in that it's quite a lot tinier than Gen the Gen2 Live USB. Um, I, I must admit, I haven't load, downloaded the latest one, but certainly if, even up to a few months ago, and certainly the last few years I've been using it, none of the live USB images have been bigger than two gigabytes. So it's quite handy to stick that small image onto, you know, an older flash drive because of its its reduced size. Um, Gen 2 has been quite big over the years, um, Linux, the live USB. And in fact, they stopped 
producing a live USB drive for a number of years, but they've recently, in the last year or so, started um, producing a live USB image, uh, which is updated, I believe, every week. Uh, and again, that's that's now be- become a more reasonable size. I think it, it was nearly up up to six gigabytes at one point. Uh, I think the latest version is around about three, three and a half gigabytes. So they're either compressing it better or maybe getting rid of some unneeded packages. But certainly whichever version you download, it will be perfectly adequate uh, to to build with. And as I say, the Linux USB, uh, sorry, the live USB that Gen 2 have started producing recently, as I say, which is in about the last year or so, any version of that, that version, that recent version, will be sufficient. If you download the older version, which I think the last version was produced in 2016, that, that would be too old. You'd have to update some of the packages in there. So it's it's far easier just to go and get the latest version. 